Okay, go ahead, Ted. All right, welcome everybody. This is the uh, edition, what is this, number 10. Social Selling TV episode number 10. We're cranking Excellent. them out. That's ten in like four weeks. So uh, yeah, that's, yeah, we're doing we're we're doing pretty good. Doing pretty good here. My yeah. name is my name is Bob Woods. I am a, a social business strategist with People Links, and um, I am executive vice president at Social Sales Link. And Ted, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Ted Pedromo, and I'm the author of Ultimate Guide to LinkedIn for Business. I do a lot of online marketing, consulting, and social media, and all that fun stuff. That's a constantly moving target. <laughs> yeah, ex yeah, exactly, precisely. And today we are here to talk about uh, LinkedIn and social selling, and we've got some and we've got some good uh, topics uh, going on with that. Hopefully, we're going to be joined here by Michael DeGroote, who is having issues uh, logging in. As I had issues logging in too, I don't know if, uh, if if it was just me or just him. I'd blame it on their end, but I'm not. Uh, but with people. But with both of us at the same time in two different countries, I don't know, maybe Blab's having some problems today. But no matter, we do have a couple people in here, and that's what's, and that's the important part. So uh, before we get started, I'd like to uh, remind people that uh, we do have the, uh, the chat room going. If you have a question, uh, please submit via chat or, or by typing uh, slash Q in before your question. We will get to them as soon as we can. We do have at least one window open for now, if you would, uh, if you'd like to join us via video and or audio, that would be great. And uh, you also have the option, and we'd like for you to use it to promote this via Twitter or Facebook. Just use the buttons in the upper. Was that the upper left? Basically, upper left. yeah. Upper left. Yeah. So let's see here. I'm going to do that real quick. Um. So, Ted, you're looking tanned and well rested. I didn't realize till I got on the camera here. <laughs> a week Ted, in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can Mexico do that to you. And 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 as me, as for me, I'm dressed dressed a little spring like because it is spring here where I'm uh, broadcasting from in uh, in the Lexington, Kentucky area and the bluegrass. So uh, I am celebrating by dressing uh, like I'm where from uh, Ted just came from. And uh, I was also out in the sun, which is why I'm even a little more Irish red than I normally am right now. Uh, let's see, so let's just check over the, uh, the chat room real quick. See uh, Laura 97, we're, we're excited to have you here too. Let's, um, let's go ahead and get uh, the discussion started. Ted was there, I, I've, I've got a couple of things. Michael had one thing, hopefully he'll, he'll be able to join in as, as well. But uh, after a week off, um, hopefully your brain is, is re-engaged into work-related things. And uh, why don't you go ahead and, uh, and let us know what's on your mind. Well, no, I, I was going to ask you what's <laughs> changed because uh, what hasn't crazy. changed? I couldn't get on the internet most of the time. It was a really slow internet connection there. Okay. So I was forced to take a vacation from my technology. Oh, that's a bummer. It was. Well, actually, I'm back. Yesterday I was major catch up mode. So yeah, that yeah, that is the only disadvantage of. Of, of, of being that disconnected from technology as you do have to catch up at some point and it tends to uh, and it tends to kind of wash over you so um, yeah so let's see with that in mind I actually published an article that I want to go over very quickly but I think before I do that just about 10 minutes before I went uh, before we started this blab, I saw something come up in my uh, in in my news feed on LinkedIn that I am copying and pasting into the into the chat window. It's from Rain Selling, which I which I respect a lot in terms of in terms of sales and in terms of sales training. And the article is entitled "Why Social Selling Will Soon Be Just Selling," basically. So. Um, so they have oh here comes michael hey hey right. michael hey hey how you doing you can hear me i can yep. hear you yeah Fantastic. Yeah, so, so so actually um i i was going to start talking about this only because only because you weren't on but uh but but we were going to uh quickly address the uh social selling becoming just sales 
angle of 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 things and and i know that that's something that that you'd want to talk about so rather than me do it why don't you go ahead oh wow okay yeah <laughs> you are in the hot seat thank it, you it, yeah it, it are you were you talking about the article the, yes yeah yes so the premise yeah. in this article is very much about the fact that we're all calling it social selling today right and how everybody needs to be embracing this and in the future it's just going to be called selling now which is fair enough everybody's saying this will just be part of the way that we do business or try and engage with our future buyers and you know be thought leaders and everything else and I, I about a year ago, I wrote a similar article and I just called it modern selling. You know, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that people want to just call it selling mm -hmm. today because it's just going to be part of what we do. Mm -hmm. I still think there is a there is some requirement to differentiate it today. It's called social selling. But I I just would like to call it modern selling. You know, it's a modern way of doing business. I, I also still believe that people, except for people that are already in sales, there are people out there that have a problem with the word sales or selling because, <laughs> yeah. you know, being sold to by a salesperson is not something that people enjoy most of the time. And, mm -hmm. and yeah. so, you know, there is a barrier perhaps to get over for people that are not in the industry because, you know, a salesperson will go, yes, yeah, sales, selling, I haven't got a problem with the term. But if you were to speak to somebody who's being sold to, they will have an issue with the term. So, you know, I don't know what the solution is. I'm just kind of putting it out there for debate to say, you know, selling or sales is still perceived a little bit as something that people don't enjoy. And that's mm -hmm. why. And many many people have talked about it and, and you guys have written about it too i'm absolutely sure and that is yes. that the buyer will find the salesperson you know the buyer will come to us as salespeople, and they will already be ready to have a conversation with us because they've done all their search you know they've got their friend called google and they've done all their search and they've they know what they want so when they pick the phone up or email somebody they are already whatever the figure is today 70 percent of the way there probably right yeah so I kind of associate it like if you're having a garage sale and you just put up posters around your neighborhood you're kind of putting a message out there and people will come to you mm -hmm. and i tell people with social media put those kind of posters out there but don't sell to people just get their attention and then they'll right. come and find you yeah, it's just like uh, Cameron Firefish just uh, just typed in the chat room. The buyer is sixty percent of the way through the buying process nowadays before they even engage with the human, which is uh, that um, uh, that that is an impressive number. And and I agree. It's uh, and and Colleen is agreeing. Uh, it's contemporary selling. Most people don't even recognize the term social sales, which is which which is an interesting point and and a good point as as well. I love the contemporary. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's even better than modern. Yeah. <laughs> modern, contemporary, <laughs> or just I mean, you know, just 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 plain old sales. But um, you know, and 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 probably because um, it, it seems that when it comes to sales training right now, you still have you know people like us who who train in social selling and you know we 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 bill ourselves as as you know our processes can plug into any type of sales process whatsoever and then you have just the uh the the sales trainers who sometimes they do address social selling sometimes they don't i know that sandler uh sales has has assist has has a linkedin uh kind of module out there right now which i've read and it's not bad but um you know it's it, it definitely doesn't go into the uh the uh, type of detail that that we do uh do you see as uh because i think in the rain selling and i'm just reading this real quick they predict that uh if I, i'm just going to read this paragraph in five years time we'll we'll just call social selling a part of selling 
The thought of picking up the phone and dialing a perfect stranger with hardly any preparation in an effort to secure the meeting will be as alien to us as the idea that once we were actually dialing, quote unquote, on a rotary phone. You well, I, I tell you what, I, I believe that there is still a massive discussion going on around the integration of sales and marketing and because the, the lines are getting very blurred now, because mm -hmm. as a salesperson, you, you need to have content. You need to be a thought leader. You need to be writing. You need to be sharing. You need to be talking, engaging. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things that traditionally has been, you know, in the camp of marketing teams, mm -hmm. and now we're asking salespeople to become more like marketers uh, yeah. as well. So, you know, the lines, and, and I know there is a lot of debate going on in organizations about this because, okay, do marketing write the content and provide it to salespeople to share or do salespeople themselves become, you know, those individuals as well? Mm -hmm. So even though, you know, I don't think selling is going to be just selling in the future in five years' time. I think it's going to be a totally different approach because of the marketing piece. Just my mm -hmm. personal view. Yeah. Chad, what do you think? The, now, the big problem, I worked for a software company for three and a half years. And marketing, we were in marketing and we had a consistent message we were putting out there. Mm -hmm. Then salespeople started doing tweeting and they're starting to send put, put content out there, but it wasn't consistent all the time. So we had the job of like herding the cats to make sure everybody that's publishing something was consistent in our message. Right. We use the same brand messaging. So it's kind of hard. We didn't want to be the police, but we had to have that consistency. And actually, C. Laura just uh, C. Laura, I don't know how you pronounce it. C. Laura 97 uh, just just came up with a very good point in the chat room. It's getting confusing, she says, especially when we're being measured by sales quota. quota. Carmen, thank you, Carmen. But uh, when, when we're being measured by sales quota, but must take time for these time consuming tasks, which may not lead to a sale in months, which is which which to me speaks to a, um, a, a mindset change that needs to be made among sales management and upper management at companies and at least and, uh, and and this isn't a direct plug for 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 the main company that I work with but but with people links and obviously with other with with CRMs as well you can track um, social uh, selling influenced sales you know just through uh, you know by entering them via via lead sources or you know at, at the most basic level up to what we do at, at, at people links which is actually integrating with like Salesforce and, and tracking them and putting them on a grid and actually showing the sales influence of social selling via all of the um, all of the other sales channels that that companies use but that is a but 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 that's a very important point and um, and I guess, do you do you all see a, a a a change in sales management yet, or 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 is social selling still still climbing a very uh, uphill battle when it comes to acceptance by by those higher ups? I think Go it ahead. depends on the company, the culture. Some companies get it, and they're moving in that direction quickly. Other companies are still moving slowly, and they really don't have the consistent organization. It means different things to different people and audiences. So some people believe that social selling means advertising on social channels. Mm -hmm. Which you it know, does <laughs> just to, to kind of put stuff out there and go buy me. And some of it may stick, some of it might not. You just don't know. Mm -hmm. some, of it, some of it, and, and I'm talking about posting, you know, messages like that. Other people think it's advertising, li literally putting paid ads on social channels. Mm -hmm. Some of it works. Some of it doesn't work. I mean, Facebook is doing all right out of it. Yep. And then um, others that I've come across believe that they need to be learning a lot about, and I've noticed this particularly with financed, financial institutions, 
that they want a dashboard where they can learn a lot about the organization and the individuals in the organization. So they get lots of, you know, information, data mm-hmm. on the organization that will allow them to design tactics. So they may get some social data, some news data, and some social media data together to aggregate on an organization and people within it that will then allow them to design some tactics how to then engage with them so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah there are different approaches i think because it it still means different things to different people right and i think was it in your article forgive me because i can't i just read it a few seconds ago but did you did you say about branding at all um i don't know if i uh i I don't know if that got into branding so much yeah but i I talk a lot about the personal brand that people need to relate to more Mm -hmm. so yeah we can have a company message but actually we need to trust some individuals that can I know we say thought leader, but I'd like to call them personal brands because we're all in some degree kind of in our own little way celebrities now, you know, because you're on on social, you can have thousands of followers and maybe in some cases hundreds of thousands of followers. (laughs) And so you've got to have, you know, a good brand. Anyway, I'll shut up for a minute. Let you. Go. No, that's a, no, no, no. That was that was all fantastic. So, um, yeah, I guess just in terms of 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 that personal personal celebrities, that's 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 been something I've been kind of kind of percolating over a little bit. But um, yeah, I I I almost I want to call it something like micro celebrity or or something like that. I mean, because there are beginning to be you know within all of the niches that we have, that we have, and I'm talking about any niche whatsoever, demographic, blah, blah, whatever. I mean, there are definitely kind of stars or celebrities or whatever who, who, who rise up to the top and, uh, and, and, and start to get recognition. And I think that as social sellers, we should actually be striving to, to achieve that status because when you get that status, especially in the business arena, you also have, um, you also gain that, uh, that the, the thought leadership and the, um, and the branding as a quote unquote expert so that people will, will, will trust you and, 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 and your company solutions or products or, or whatever at, at that point as well. And I think that that's just huge. It, a lot of it depends on your buying cycle too. Like that company yes. I worked for, it was a one to two year buying cycle. It was a very high ticket software item. Yeah. So we had to have a consistent message going out there. We had different messages for different parts of the buying cycle. Mm-hmm. And then we had a couple of people that were all the celebrities. The CEO was a celebrity because he created the product. Right. And then we had another guy who was, he worked with the analysts. So he made sure we had a good relationship with all the analysts. Mm-hmm. And then we had the tech guy who was like God. He's one of the original developers too. Mm-hmm. So he's like a big celebrity. And then the rest of us were just kind of putting that message out there. Sure. Sure. Uh, Colleen uh, says that uh, she thinks that unless the team executive team understands, uh, understands social selling and has a vision, it's difficult to create sustainability. It should be woven into an overall strategy uh, like KPIs and engaged through multiple areas, including HR, sales, marketing, even customer service. And, and something that, uh, that, that we've been pushing lately at, at people links just, um, you know, just employee promotion, no matter where that employee is with, with within the company. So what do you think of gamification of that process? Like Mario talks about that a lot. Yeah. Uh, ga- gamification is actually part of the people links platform. And um, I think that when it comes to, to like salespeople because salespeople tend to be competitive in in the first place so uh so so i think that gamification can can help um can help build social selling throughout the sales organization and probably to a certain extent the 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 marketing side of things as well um when it comes to general employees you know it just 
it depends on that employee. Not um, not everyone wants to see themselves in first place. They're just not all competitive necessarily. So um, you know, maybe maybe that doesn't work quite as well in in a broader audience. But I definitely think that when it comes to sales, marketing, biz dev, even even executive management, all those people tend to be competitive. So so the gamification of 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 this type of thing definitely helps helps build social selling throughout an organization. It's interesting because quotas are kind of gamification. They've been around forever, but now they want more. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course they want more. <laughs> That's why they're in business, which is good. I mean, which is good, you know. So uh, what? Um, and 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 the one thing that I can't answer is, you know, is uh, are there are there prizes being attached to gamification and things like that quite quite frankly you know maybe maybe companies can can start doing that a, a little bit more you know even even if it's a you know ten dollar starbucks gift card or you know amazon or whatever you know it doesn't have you know it should be probably a little more more symbolic than actual um than actually monetizing or or whatever but uh you know that can only help help increase adoption of social selling throughout the enterprise. I I have a, a challenge and it, it really depends on how people set up the gamification because the danger with anything and Colleen the same with KPIs um, when you are putting individuals um, and measure their performance against other individuals so everybody can see where everybody is you you lose the kind of team approach in terms of achieving success for the organization and i appreciate that people need to have goals and some targets etc but when you say to people right michael you know your gamification was really great here's a prize then how's everybody else going to feel they may have done you know a huge amount of work themselves and don't feel rewarded for it and the, it will the morale won't be very good now there's always a challenge with that because i appreciate you can also say well michael or ted's done a great job you know you should all aspire to be like him or her and you know try and get to that place too because they're a good example for you so you can strive to be as good as allison or whoever Mm -hmm. But the trouble is, th there's no doubt you're going to feel down at some stage if you haven't reached your quota or your KPI or your mm -hmm. gamification level or number of stars. Or mm -hmm. This is the trouble. In terms of modern management, I, I don't think 100% that way is, is that great. Unless there are some team, you know, some team KPIs or gamification stars mm -hmm. along the journey. Yeah. Uh, any views on that? Well, everywhere I've worked, boy, the salespeople are just ruthless. Like they're just going for the top. And mm -hmm. if they don't make it, they don't survive. If you don't make your quota a few months in a row, you're gone. Mm -hmm. They were like just super motivated and they were just, they would do anything to close sales. Mm -hmm. And it got ugly at times, but there's always a cup of cream of the crop. There's always like two or three people fighting for that top spot every month. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And other people were trying, but yeah, you know, they all of a sudden they disappeared. Their desk was empty one day. <laughs> yeah, and, and if you have that ruthless approach, where it's higher and higher, then yeah, you're right. I mean, is if that's the culture that organizations want to develop, then forget social selling. Yeah, because mm -hmm. that's never going to stick in a in a culture of higher and higher. Right. Know, be, oh yeah. It's because the journey on social selling isn't overnight. It's not tomorrow. It's maybe not even next week. It could be three months down the down the road before you're going to get some engagement or a conversation, potentially. Mm -hmm. The trouble is, if, if it's a hire and fire culture and you've got KPIs or you know, results that you have to deliver within days, then all you're going to get is connect, email, ask for the sale. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> and oh yeah, you know, the, the whole thing about thought leadership, personal branding, you know, listening, mm-hmm. all of those things just go out of the window. Yeah. And the trouble is most people are impatient. I agree. They, yes. they, need, they need a sale. You right. Know? Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow, next week. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Five actually, minutes. Yeah. So actually, so uh, speaking of that, uh, needing sales and generating leads and things like that, Carmen uh, C. Laura 97 actually has a question from the chat room and uh, Ted might, might be the best person to ask this I'm, or answer this. I'm not sure. She says, I have heard of salespeople generating tons of leads successfully through Twitter. What tips do you have on how to make this happen for myself? And she says that she's uh, open to tips not only for Twitter, but also other social media channels as well. So whoever wants to take that, go ahead. First question is, what are you selling? Because that depends. You can generate good leads on Twitter, but like for that software company, you're not going to sell a $100,000 software product through Twitter, but you're going to get their attention through that. Okay. So Carmen says consulting engagements. Okay. Yeah, so it's kind of like that, what I talked about before. If you're having a garage sale, put little posters up all over, little messages that people see. And it's this, you know, I schedule a lot of my tweets because I have all these excerpts from my books. So they're always going out there different places at different times. And people say, you're everywhere on social media. And I just kind of giggle and say, <laughs> it's all automatic. But it's I do complement that with personal interactions. So Sure. Sure. Yeah. And then you also have to, and, and, and this is something that, that, that Michael wanted to bring up too, but you also have to uh, listen to, um, to, to what's going on in just, just in social media in general, especially when people do retweet you or, or, or comment on your posts or, you know, whatever. And that's, and that's whether you're talking about Twitter or a, or a Facebook company page or a personal page or a, um, or a LinkedIn, uh, or, or LinkedIn page too. And, and Michael, do you, do you want to get into that a little bit more listening? Yeah. Uh, the way that Twitter can be very, very useful is by creating lists. So if you find your potential bias on Twitter, you can follow them or not even follow them. You can just add them to a list. And that list could be private, so they don't even know they've been added to the list. And you can review only those few people, and they could be, I don't know, a dozen, 20, 50, 100. You will only have those few people on your list that you will engage with and look at what they're talking about and what they're sharing. And it could be anything from business to personal stuff, because that's Mm -hmm. what people do. Um, But that's where you can start developing a little bit of engagement. My advice, nevertheless, would be hopefully you can move that discussion or a little bit of engagement on Twitter and move that over to LinkedIn where you can engage at a deeper level. So mm-hmm. once you've become familiar with that person and maybe they followed you back if you follow them, then within a few days, maybe five days, you could then ask to connect with them on Twitter. Uh, I'm sorry, on LinkedIn. LinkedIn because you can then develop a more, you know, a deeper conversation with them, hopefully there, depending on their their platform of choice. I mean, they may not actually be doing that much on LinkedIn, but they're very busy on Twitter. Yeah. So you have to make that call. Do I move them over to LinkedIn and engage with them there, or do I stay on Twitter? But I, I find that having lists uh, inside Twitter means you can just work with those few people and, and just see what they're doing uh, mm-hmm. and listen for the cues because there's, you know, things in what they're saying and, and pick the time when you want to engage with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and then the, the only thing I would say is always keep in mind the ultimate goal of social selling, which is to take online conversations offline. That's the ultimate goal that you have. So, I mean, so let's say, for example, you have somebody on Twitter who, who doesn't use LinkedIn, maybe, maybe at, you know, maybe at that point, they, they would be willing to do a call instead. That's, that's, that's entirely possible. So uh, with, with that in mind, uh, Cameron has called in and Cameron, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks hey, so welcome. much for having us, guys. Really appreciate it. I'm loving what you guys are talking about just now. Good, good, good. Uh, 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 would you want to join us, Pat? Did, did you have a question or anything? 
Yeah, I just wanted to sort of uh, touch in on the on the Twitter side of things. Like you guys are totally on point with that. Like building the lists is a fantastic way to uh, to start to monitor what's going on in your marketplace. Um, dip in and out of those lists, drop in with some engagement, favorite some of your prospects content, retweet it, share it, let them see that you're on their radar. And then as you guys rightly say, like the goal then is to try and move that communication either onto somewhere like LinkedIn or take that conversation offline and actually get them on the phone. Once mm-hmm. once you then get that telephone conversation going and you uncover some of their pain, the approach that, that I take is then to go back onto that social platform and then add some value off of the back of the pain points that I've got from them on the telephone. Drop a tweet out there with some content in there about the pain, you know, the issues that they're having. Put something out on LinkedIn about the issue they're having. So it's that kind of subconscious message to say like, hey, I'm here, I've listened to what you're saying and we have the solution to your problem. Yeah. Yeah, things like when people retweet your stuff, if you say thank you to them, they're like, wow. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Or little things. Or at least just click on that heart. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, even you know, you know, even 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 just acknowledging that, you know, hey, hey, I saw that and that's cool. I mean, even even that goes a long way too. And then something else that's been happening with with me more and more, I don't know if it's been been, been happening with, with, with you all, but uh, but um uh, Twitter actually has has the ability to tag people now too, and I'm and and I'm noticing that I'm actually getting tagged more and more in posts too, and or in uh, in tweets too, and, and and I think that that's a really really good way to um to 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 get yourself and and your message noticed with with, with these people who who you're following and uh, and uh, and you know may may want to talk with or at least get on their radar. Definitely. Chris Brogan is a really good person to follow on Twitter. If you don't, if you follow him, he engages in conversations with hundreds of people every day. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. Yeah, I think like the whole social selling mentality is uh, is moving in the in the total right direction. It used to be that the old traditional sales mantra would be always be closing, but we need to shift away from that now and sort of always be helping, add value at every single stage of the process, and then you're going to get a much better return. I noticed in the comments earlier, someone was asking about about Twitter. Mm-hmm. If you want to start to use Twitter for prospecting, you need to be adding value in every single tweet you put out there. If there's no value attached, people aren't going to engage with you and want to chat with you. Yeah, precisely. I don't know if you guys have uh, used, some of you might use Buffer, and um, Buffer have come out with a new product, which is called uh, Respond. Respond, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I have um, not seen it yet, but I know that it's there. I, it is awesome in terms of helping you with that engagement. Sometimes it's a bit clunky to have conversations inside Twitter, um, mm-hmm. but this takes takes the conversation into respond. And you know, okay, it's been set up probably for kind of customer service type stuff, but I found it's been much easier for me to engage in some conversations backwards and forwards with people using mm. using that method mm. and it's really really neat because you have like an inbox you know so if you've been mentioned then you can see and you can just engage with it and it's free um there's obviously kind of upgrades to business accounts and things but it's free if you have a buffer account uh, i think you may need to be on the awesome plan of buffer or something i'm not sure uh i am but I don't know if that's a condition. I think you can just go and get the product without being on Buffer because it's a standalone, standalone oh. product. Yeah. Oh, that's cool too. Yeah. That's cool. Sendable. Sendable does similar things too. I've been using that for about two months now. Okay, great. Yeah. Do you right. think that makes it a bit easier for you, Michael, to do your sort of like your social listening when it comes to Twitter then using that, just having everything in the one place? Well, it's 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 the only thing that comes in there is when I'm being mentioned on ah, Twitter. Cool. Uh, but I mean, just a simple thing like uh, I went to TEDx Warwick at the weekend. Yeah. And there is a TEDx Birmingham coming up in a few weeks' time, or in June. But the tickets go on sale on the 11th of March, and I'm there's like a back and forth going on with some people. Um, and it's so easy to just have that conversation. You can direct message or public tweet, and you have the whole thread kind of kept together in one place, and it makes it super easy to do. 
Mm-hmm. That's really cool. I'm going to check that out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've I've been meaning to check that out too. Just just haven't had a chance to. So um, yeah. So this. Uh, so, so we are continuing to, to roll here. If uh, if you have a question, please pop it into chat, and uh, and and we will go ahead and answer it for you. We're probably going to be here until. Oh, thank you, uh, thank you, Michael. That's uh, that that definitely helps. There is a link to respond uh, from Buffer in the chat as well. We're probably going to take this uh, here until about forty five minutes after the hour. So, if you have a question. Please feel free to pop in. Cameron, was there anything else that you wanted to talk about? No, thanks, guys. I'll free up the seat in case somebody else wants to jump in. Thank you so much okay. for having that me. Okay, that sounds good. Thank Cheers. you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, guys. Appreciate Thank it. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. I kind of had the anti-social selling experience last week at, in Mexico. <laughs> oh, what happened? <laughs> oh, Not timeshare presentations. <laughs> oh, time. <laughs> Well, you talk about the exact polar opposite from from the uh, from 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 social selling. So, how was it? Well, so we've been on lots of them because we own a timeshare, so we've been through oh. dozens. Mm-hmm. And we like I like to go just to see what their angles are and how they're trying to sell me. Mm-hmm. So I like it. My wife's kind of just sitting there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> These guys got really super aggressive, and he came in right away and he said, "We said, you know, we already own timeshares. We're not interested in buying more." Blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. And he goes, 99% of people come in here and tell me that. And I sell 50% of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he just started from the first second, just boom, boom, boom. Oh, and he brought in the one. second guy, the closer. Oh. Mm-hmm. And they're like, you're trying to sign the papers so you can get out. So he brings the papers and then he's like trying to sell you. And then mm-hmm. the third person who gives you your gifts, which was, you know, free <laughs> meals and stuff, they're still trying to sell you, making even a better deal. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, Our God, forty-five minutes funny. took four hours. Oh, oh. oh yeah, <laughs> that's something. You you could have been on the beach all that time. The guy was yeah, yelling exactly. at us. The second guy was like, "You are crazy for not doing this. You're spending so much extra money." You are, <laughs> and we're like, uh, "Whatever." <laughs> We just oh, want to go to the beach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, Joel has a quick question. How do you feel about cold calling in person? Door knocking. Da, 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 da. Well, um, I used to door knock once upon a time. I don't know if Michael or Ted ever door knocked in in uh, in in previous sales roles, but um, it's interesting. Uh, it's the most fascinating thing to do. You meet some yeah. really great people. Or yeah, not yeah, so great you do. People. Yeah, it. <laughs> It usually goes one way or the other. It, you, it could go really, really good, or it could go really, really bad. Um, have Have you ever had Have you ever had the door knock, Ted? Not really. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, part of it, I think, depends on what you're selling, and 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 in B two B, I mean, I I know that people like um, I'm trying to think of some some of the big door knockers. Um, security is probably a big one. I know that a lot of people in, in, in security do. I know that uh, when it comes to uh, restaurants, get a lot of door knockers too from like uh, suppliers and 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 people like that. And um, you know, it's just uh, it is it it is kind of the the polar opposite of solar selling of of uh, I'm sorry of social selling because. Um, because it's really not much different from from the uh, teleprospecting call, but at least when you walk in, you're able to potentially establish um, a, a dialogue immediately, and it gets to be more personal immediately because because you're standing there right in front of them. So, you know, I guess um, it just it just depends. I could see companies maybe wanting to work that in to to a uh to their selling mix in general in in terms of lead generation but i don't know if i would depend on it exclusively it, although it, companies do or and businesses do i think it's what ted said earlier about some of these questions and that it depends on the product and I, i've seen some great videos of people knocking on doors with cleaning products you know mm-hmm. brushes or chamois leathers or whatever it is that is like magic and 
you know, some of these people are super, super talented mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, I've got this product, but if you buy this, I've got all of this other stuff that I'm going to give away. Right. That you're going to get, you know, and you have to admire them. I, I couldn't do it, but yeah. you have to admire them in the way that they have that. They remember everything word for word. Perfect. They know what their outcome is. They know they are super confident in making the sale. Right. And um, I suppose the nearest in kind of and it's it's mainly B2C, right, that this happens. I mean, B2B, I know it does happen, but I B2B, don't think people... it does happen. Um, cleaning is 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 actually one of the things that that happens in in, in B2B as well. And, and I only interrupt a little bit just because Joel said uh, it sounds like he does copier software, IT that type of thing. Um, I would think that with those areas where there's a lot of information involved in, uh, in, in terms of disseminating and helping and things like that prior to the sale, I, I would say that social selling would be the better way to do things as opposed to cold calling just because, just because of that huge information factor. But, you know, um, I guess I would never discount uh, door knocking, especially if you're really good at it. Yeah. The Cutco knife salespeople that show up at your door. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, and, and, and I mean, and I've known people in the past, I've, I've seen people in the past who do, who do really well at it too. So, I mean, you know, I was, I was okay to, to decent at it, but, um, uh, Anyhow, I'm sorry. I just got uh, I just got torn, torn away here. by bye. We'll take we'll, we'll take this chat uh, question real quick, and then we're going to wrap up. Uh, someone here, uh, Tammy, is a wellness coach and works with a nutrition company. Has 500 plus followers on LinkedIn. However, not approached uh, connections there. Not sure of the proper methods. Um, anyone want to take that real quick? Well, being active really helps just even if you're like that you know the little happy birthdays that gets an amazing response for me yeah it does yeah and when does. people change jobs the little thank you note those little things and posting content bob you're always posting content all right so and mm -hmm. michael too mm -hmm. i so i think yeah i i think being active start being active on pulse and write a write some I mean, wellness is a massive subject. I mean, I was involved in wellness many years ago. That's why my company is called Staying Alive UK, because it was all about well-being in the workplace. And actually, it's a massive topic at the moment. And people are interested in wellness and well-being and mindfulness. And those subject matters are interesting nowadays for people to see, you know, how can I be better at doing it? I know nutrition I don't know if the nutrition is multi-level marketing because that's possible too. Um, I'm not so sure that would work that well inside LinkedIn personally, but what I would suggest is write a pulse post, but try not to advertise your products. Try and, you know, share, in, share your knowledge and thought leadership about nutrition and wellness. Mm -hmm. That would be my advice. Maybe okay. even take the angle of if your employees eat better, they're better nutrition, your sick days will go down, your health care costs will go down for your company. Take those kind of angles to get people's attention. Because LinkedIn, they're all about business mindset. Right. Definitely. So I think it's 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 1145. I think we are going to wrap things up for the day. Oh, oh we got one other person calling in. I'm, I'm sorry. We're, we're going to have to wait until next time. But this is a reminder that we are here every Wednesday at 11 o'clock Eastern and uh, and 9 a.m. Pacific, how that translates to your time period. Uh, ho hopefully you'll be able to, to figure that out. So I uh, just want to thank everyone for joining us. Michael, Ted, uh, I think Thanks, that went Bob. well. Thank you. And Thank you. So we're going to thanks everybody recording here. Thanks everybody. We appreciate it. Um, let's see. We're going to.